plane and shape of grove that anything taken from down below makes you look like you have a chin that goes like this. Okay. So I want to thank Damon and Tina um, for hosting us. This is great. Years ago, um, I was friends with a lot of people in the athletics program. I was taking classes there myself. And this was the norm. I mean, everybody would have house reading. So it's great to see Damon and Tina kind of brought this back to life. So a few weeks ago, um, I attended Bob Pohl's ceremony. He's here somewhere. Um, he received a literary award along with Manny Freed. And Manny Freed is how old, Bob? 96. 96. And uh, he's an amazing individual. And uh, he said during the ceremony, you know, he's in a wheelchair. He, can, he can't really talk, but he did say he will always remember this. And uh, it really inspired this next it's called Redbird Song. I will always remember this red bird song, wordless, moonlit, pewter sky, pale hand, time lined. Last year's fawn, forgotten, gone, flower of the field. We shall keep near what remains far, the red bird sings. Love it all, despite everything. And I went back today and I like I have a few new poems and some new flash, but I also went back into my archives and damn, I have a lot of cold winter poems. <laughs> so I grabbed them. Okay. A winter afternoon and everyone sighing. Today the trees tangled up torn stand gilded silver. Church bells plaintive hearsay fading high. A winter afternoon, and everyone sighing for the sun's seldom blow, saplings footed frail in the seams of false spring. So after my book from Blazebox came out, I stopped writing poetry. <laughs> and I told everybody that I wasn't going to be a poet anymore, <laughs> for real. <laughs> um, but I started writing some flash and playing a lot of music instead. So this was one of the first flash pieces that I wrote, and it's, uh, it's called February Girl. He told her he liked the way the sunlight made her hair sparkle. They were sitting in his mother's pink and turquoise kitchen. There were pink roses on everything, the curtains, the chair cushions, the napkin holder, even the toaster and blender sat draped in rose printed covers. He said he wanted to take her photo because of the way the sunlight was hitting her hair. It was just perfect, and he liked how it covered one of her eyes. The man left the room to get his camera, and the girl smoothed her long, blonde hair. Outside, there was nothing but new snow piled on top of old snow. The weight of it all brought a heavy quietness to the afternoon. The furnace kicked in again, and the girl thought of how the man's mother would sit on the living room floor in front of the heating vent. Every morning, the man's mother sat there, curled like a house cat, reading her Bible. Sometimes, the distant sound of a woman sobbing low crawled slowly up the heat duct into the upstairs bedroom where the girl slept, filling the room with the saddest chill. It had been almost two months since the man's father had collapsed over the back of his desk chair, his hand to his heart. He was fresh from his bath, wearing his plaid flannel bathrobe, his best suit waiting on the bed. The girl remembered that night after they had returned from the hospital with nothing more to say, the man's mother had vacuumed the carpets before the pastor arrived. The man was standing before her now, head down and fumbling with his camera lens. Can you put your hair back over one eye? So one of the perks of dating Andrew <laughs> so this was a total surprise, and Andrew, uh, we were reading in Brooklyn, and he was going to a lot of meetings. <laughs> and I was like, oh, they really have a lot of meetings, but okay, I'll see you later, bye. And like later, now when he tells people about it, he says, it'd be so easy to cheat on me. <laughs> I'll leave everything that he tells me. 
All right, but this, is, this is from this book. It's called Metal Lark. Field dried, stretched, shreds and patches, leap to have. Whistle clear, song distant than close. Stiff wings sail and beat. Empty places nest, arched over ache. Today, tell me again. Reframed, perhaps if would be better said. Twisted collar, come when unclasped. Short tail, nervously open. I find you find me strange and plaintive. Faint cry, uttering lament. So the funny thing happened on the way to Andrew's house. <laughs> now we live together, but this this is actually a, a I keep a little journal. This is a true story. A mother load. Standing at the curb, my eyes are trying to focus upon a sepia toned pile of junk that patiently awaits trash day. A skinny kid dressed in gray sweatpant cutoffs and a faded Buffalo Bills t shirt suddenly appears at my side. The kid fills me in. <coughs> They had a garage sale last weekend. They're gone now. Oh, I reply, while sizing up a stack of antique world magazines neatly tied together with yellowing string. Anything good? Lots of stuff, he says flatly. We are both transfixed on the pile. Wow, look at that old computer. And what is that, a box of Christmas bows, I ask? The kid says rather proudly, uh-huh, a big box of them. In trance-like silence, we scrutinize this mother load of unwanted garage sale leftovers. We don't touch anything, we just look. One of us might find something really good, and if it happens, we'll both be equally happy about it. I say, maybe you can do something with that giant plastic candy cane. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing, he replies, his voice slightly raising in pitch. 